The center section of the wing on the Dark Air 1 is one of the most heavily loaded structures in the entire aircraft. The Dark Air 1 is an aircraft designed for traveling long distances at high speed, and we've been working towards flight testing our prototype. After discussions amongst our team, we decided to pull forward some unique requirements that meant testing the airframe further than would be typically expected of a fast cross-country aircraft. It was a long road to get to this point, and along the way, we entirely rebuilt the center section of the wing, did extensive testing in-house, and ultimately implemented one of the strongest ways to create a bonded joint using composites. Let's talk about it. First, let's look at what makes the wing of the Dark Air 1 so unique. It's a fully bonded structure with no mechanical fasteners and no central spar. This means that the wing relies on the outer skins to carry load rather than a structural I-beam, which is what you'd traditionally find on other aircraft. An internal skeleton of machine honeycomb panel ribs and shear webs are bonded inside the wing to stabilize the skins and help them maintain their shape. Previously, we proof load tested the wing to normal category loading conditions in both the positive and negative G directions. And now we are moving on to testing the wing to fuselage interface. A key piece of data feeding into that test is the angular deflection of the wing root ribs under load, since this deflection will transmit into that fuselage interface. We were planning another wing test to build upon our previous proof load testing and collect angular deflection numbers. And we saw this as an opportunity to batch implement a number of other changes and have them tested as well. These changes included the stiffened structure for our flat mounting hardware, as well as in inspection ports, but really the most interesting change and what will be the focus of this video were the modifications we made to the center section shear web joints. The original wing design used simple butt joints to tie in the center section shear webs into the wing skins. This worked well in the prototype wing and also provided a major advantage in terms of manufacturing simplicity. However, we knew it would limit the ultimate structural capability of the center section of the wing during extreme edge case loading conditions, such as encountering a negative G gust during a dive beyond your v &E speed. During these extreme loading conditions, there was a change for the center section shear webs to disbond from the rest of the wing. We spent a long time thinking about ways that we could improve this design, and as our manufacturing capabilities grew, we came up with a design that we really liked. To give us the additional margin we were seeking, we decided to implement a bonding strategy known as a pie joint. But to explain more about what pie joints are, we're gonna take a trip over to the marker board. Here's a butt joint, and here's a pie joint. Let's take a look at the butt joint first, since this is what we use commonly throughout the wing, tails, and fuselage of the Dark Air 1. The butt joint is simple to manufacture, and we've tested hundreds of little coupons of this type of joint, and measured its strength with different adhesive and material combinations, and in different load directions, so we have a pretty good idea of its capability and its limits. It develops its strength by transferring load through its adhesive bond area. This bond area is relatively limited, so while it can handle loads in both tension and shear, there's opportunity to increase its strength, particularly in the tensile direction where we're pulling directly up on the web perpendicular to the flange. While it's best practice to design bonded joints so that they are loaded in shear rather than in tension, sometimes these tensile loads are unavoidable. And this is what we might see if, say, the skins of the airframe were compressed and they tried to buckle out of plane. For instance, the section of skin at the center of the wing is shaped in such a way that when exposed to negative G loading conditions, this section of skin wants to buckle away from the center shear webs more easily than everywhere else in the wing. Skin buckling creates an out of plane loading condition that is inherently more difficult to design around when it comes to composite structures. But this is where our pie joint offers increased strength. Looking more closely at the pie joint, you can see that it incorporates additional flanges that are shaped like an upside down Greek pie symbol, which is actually where this joint gets its name. These flanges accomplish a few things. The base plies increase the bonded area at the base of the joint, and these upright sections offer more bonding area for our web. Also, the fact that the flanges are connected together as one piece and made out of carbon fiber creates a load path that allows for better load transfer across the joint in both shear and in tension. Another key aspect of our pie joint, in addition to the 90 degree plies that sit outboard, are the inboard U-plies that sit between them. These U-plies further increase our bond area and help the outer flange plies hold their shape when tension loads are applied across the joint. These U-plies can't be ignored if we're trying to go for maximum strength. One rebuttal to the pie joint might be to say, well, why don't we just take our 90 plies and add those to a standard butt joint? And while this would increase the strength of the standard butt joint, you don't get nearly the same strength as you do with a pie joint where you would be missing these inner U-plies that help stabilize those outer 90s. We were able to see this through a series of tests with our pull test machine where we characterized the strength of a standard butt joint, a butt joint with 90 degree plies added, and of course the pie joint. We then repeat we did this test multiple times for each sample based around our manufacturing process in order to build confidence around our pie joint manufacturing technique. This ultimately gave us the confidence to proceed into the full construction of the joint that would end up inside the wing. 
this multi-pi joint structure. This structure effectively increases the amount of bonding area that we get compared to using just standard butt joints and thus prevent the lower wing skin from buckling away from the center shear webs under those extreme load case scenarios that I mentioned earlier. So you manufacture these multi-pi joint structures under a budget and under a time constraint. We start by laying up pre prayed cloth in a mold like this that match the contour of our wing skins to create the base of the multi-pie joint. To mold the upright flanges of the pie joints, we 3D printed these risers out of a high temp material and aligned them to the mold base using this outer assembly jig, set these on top of our base plies and then laid up on these. The whole assembly was then vacuum bagged and cured. In production of Dark Air One wings, we would integrate this entire assembly into the lower wing skin, which would give us a higher manufacturing efficiency. As interesting as it would be to use this multi-pie joint structure throughout the rest of the wing, it's only really necessary in the center section where the outer plane tensile loads are the highest. To retrofit the multi-pie joint structures into the existing wing, we recognized that there were going to be a number of manufacturing challenges in order to accomplish this. But I'll turn it over to Ryan who explained more about this right before we closed out the center section of the wing. You can see the pie joints installed in the center section of the wing. They span from about this location to about there. We only have them installed in the center section because this is the most heavily loaded part of the wing. So you can see that there's three segments of lower pie joint installed and bonded to the lower wing skin. This material that you see right here is the lower wing skin which spans, it's one part from wing tip to wing tip. And then this material that you see here is the upper wing skin and that spans from right here all the way to the wing tip. Same for this side. That was existing geometry, existing part that had already been built up and assembled together. And then we installed or retrofit these pie joint structures into uh, that structure. Because of that, we had to tackle the assembly challenge of kind of working into a box or a hole, if you will. So that's why we did segment the pie joints. If we were building this just from ground up, we would be assembling it slightly differently in a much more easy, manufacturable type of way. So the lower pie joint sections, we installed individually, and that's because we used vacuum bag to load them up or clamp them to the lower wing skin while the adhesive cure and then we just wanted to localize that vacuum bag instead of trying to do all three at once within the cure time or more so the working time of the adhesive. We bonded them all in individually. One of the challenging aspects of that was making sure we had alignment with the multiple parts of the existing geometry of the wing. So when we were installing the lower pie joint, we had to make sure it was lined up with the top wing skin here so that we had a, a flush surface for future hardware to mount to or future structures to be built off of. Between the lower pie joints themselves, we had to keep relative alignment uh, because we're putting honeycomb panels. So we had to install those spanning between the lower pie joints. And this panel stock, we make it in-house. Locally, it's plus or minus one thou. And because we have it spanning the pie joint seam, we had to make sure that the pie joints themselves would allow for that tight tolerance and allow the panel to slide in and out between the two lower pie joints. So that was a challenge to make sure they were aligned, but we came up with a custom clamping method, if you will, or locating method. We were able to dry fit without adhesive beforehand and do multiple runs with these locating features and putting it under a vacuum bag and practicing the install before introducing adhesive to the assembly and can ensure alignment through bonding each pie joint in separately. In its current state, you can see that four of the panels are in. We're about to bond in the fifth panel, the center panel. Alignment is good to go. We did get it aligned enough to put the panels in. After this, we're going to be working on closing out the top of this with a single component that bridges from here to here. We call that the bow tie. It kind of has a bow tie shape to it, but uh, that's what ties the upper wing skins together, as well as ties into these uh, center shear webs. After completing the rebuild of the center section, the entire wing had to be validated once again so that we could confirm that these updates were structurally sound. To test the wing, we pulled out the stand that we previously built and purchased dozens of concrete bags from Home Depot. 
if you haven't seen our previous videos on wing load testing, I'll link them down below, but these tests were pretty close to what we did before. To summarize, we simulated a range of aerodynamic loading conditions across the wing using concrete bags to apply representative lift loads across the wing surface in both the positive and negative directions. We arranged the concrete bags so that the applied load approximated a modified elliptical lift distribution. We performed both a positive and negative proof load test and also did brief cyclical testing at our positive and negative limit loads. And we're happy to report that no issues were found through this most recent batch of tests. One interesting finding was that the wing actually was stiffer with the new pie joints installed compared to where it was the last time we tested it. But otherwise, the wing met our requirements for strength under extreme edge case loading conditions. As I was saying earlier in the video, we also wanted to use these tests to measure the deflection angle of the root rib under load. And we now have the data we need to finish the remaining load cases for the wing to fuselage connection. If designing and building novel aircraft that push the limits of speed and range is something that sounds interesting to you, you should apply to join our team. We're hiring for both our engineering and technician roles to scale work on both the Dark Air One, but also other aircraft with unique capabilities. So check out our website to apply today. With the work wrapped up on the center section of the wing, we're gonna be proceeding on to the remaining load test cases for our wing to fuselage connection, but we'll save the results of that for another video. Thanks for watching, we'll catch you next time.